Hey, what's up? This is Paul Soltz from Super Easy Apps. Welcome back to this channel. I wanna show you how to get started with this new Swift tip. I, I recently decided to update this one. This was back in 2015 that I, I first did this. I want to do it again, show you everything that's changed from Swift 2 to Swift 4, and we're coming on Swift 5, but that shouldn't make this break again. All right, so Swift 3 introduced some changes that made breaking changes for all outlets and connections and that makes it really difficult if you're trying to follow some tutorials. So if you got stuck anywhere, if you've been following on Stack Overflow or another tutorial, maybe one of my old tutorials, and you can't get over it, click the like button, because I think this one's gonna help you out a lot, and then comment down below if this does help you, or if you have another question, I'm always looking for new questions, all right? So to get started, what we'll be doing is we'll be implementing this text change event so that we can get and validate text as it's being typed, and so if I type secret with an exclamation mark, that validates against my password and I can enter the room and it's now green. So we're gonna learn how to implement this from scratch right now. All right, so let's jump on over to Xcode. I'm gonna open up our, our view controller and I've got that open. Now I've got a sample project. You can download this down in the, the link below. There's a free course that you can get. It's called Swift Tips. And uh, I have that on my website at courses.supereasyapps.com. So just click that link to get into the course. You can just enroll for free so you can get all the source code. I'll have the begin start, which is what we're starting with, and then I'll have the end state as well. And I'm working to update some of those tutorials since they're three years old. All right, so let's get started. We need to create some connections. I'm gonna go into our assistant editor and create the connections that we need, and I'll hide our left and right panels and it's gonna be a little bit difficult. I'll zoom in a little bit so this looks a little bit less funky on my non-retina display. And we're gonna set up some outlets. So I'm gonna need an access to the text field itself. So I'll just create a text field outlet. I'll also create one for the button since we'll need a reference to that. And then we're gonna set up two different outlets for those things. So this is gonna be our button outlet. And I'll just keep these simple names for our, our text field, we need the text change. Now there's a couple different ways to do this. I'll show you all of them uh, in the, the UI, and then I'll show you how to do it programmatically as well if you're creating everything from scratch. And as always, I have some good coffee with me from my Hario. All right, so let's get started. Uh, okay, so let's set up the text change event. In order to do that, we'll do a right click and drag, or you can do two finger click and drag over and once we're over here, you're gonna to need to switch it over to action. Now there's a bunch of different actions. The default one is the did end, the editing did end, which is not what we want. We wanna validate as the user is typing. So we're gonna switch this over to editing changed. And then we're gonna say text field. I always like to have these descriptive. Uh, I will say text field editing changed. And so I'll just use the, the event type down below to make it very descriptive of what's going on. We'll connect this. Now I'm gonna have another video that shows how to update the old code for my old, old video. And I'm not gonna talk about all the details right now, but uh, this is different than it was in the past. And the main thing is this underscore. So if you're stuck, make sure you add the underscore and it should make things work if you've got a broken project that you're following along with. The API has changed. I'll talk about that in my next video. All right, so that's setting up the text editing. The same is true with the, the button down here. We'll switch this to action. Now we're gonna go for touch up inside. That's a typical one. That's a button press and then lift up. So that's the default one. You can go with that. You don't have to change anything. And we'll just say button press to keep this one simple. All right, so we'll connect that. And we've got our two actions. Now, if you do mess up these connections, you're gonna to have to undo them. I'm not gonna talk about that in this video. I'll discuss that in the next video. So if you do get stuck because you rename something, it will crash. You're gonna to have to remove stuff uh, real quick, I guess. You can just click the X button next to the touch up inside if you messed it up and then just reconnect it, all right? So that's how to do that. Those are our different events, and you can sort of see them when we right click. So that's how we can connect them. We can connect them directly from here. So if we ever wanna remove one, we can just remove it, and then we can reconnect it. Now you do have to drag it over to the name of the field, not the IB outlet week, because it won't match. All right, so that will reconnect it. All right, so let's get started with the code. I'm gonna go back to a single view and we're gonna to have to jump into our code file. Um, the easiest way to get there is to click on our navigator and jump into it. All right, so on start, I wanna make it, so if we run this, let's go ahead and I wanna match what we're seeing over here on the left. Let's switch this back to the iPhone 8 
And I think I've got the eight hiding here. We'll get rid of the plus. And there we go. So our button's currently enabled. So let's go ahead and disable that. We can do that. And this has changed. The property has changed from Swift to when I first did this. So it's now is enabled. We just set this to false. Next, what we're going to do is let's print out what the text is. Now, we set this up to be any. Uh, we can make this so that it matches to UI text field. So I'll go ahead and just do that so that we don't have to unwrap it or anything like that. And then we can just print out the sender. And if you wanted, you could also rename this to be like text field. Uh, that's going to overlay this one. I'll keep it at sender for now. And let's go ahead and say sender.text. Now this is a uh, optional. So I'm just going to unwrap it with a force operator. This should always be set. So you can always unwrap the text field. I don't think it's ever not nil. So I don't know why they changed the API, but I think that changed from Swift 2 to Swift 3 and it became an optional and it's really annoying. So that is our text. And let's go ahead and see what's happening with our text change events so you can sort of see how this is working. And then we'll add the validation logic that will build on top of this. So if all you're looking for is how do I get those events, this is how you do it. Now you know what to do. It's just the text editing. So there's no delegate protocol for this. It is just a target selector, uh, sorry, it's a target action method on our, our UI elements. And there's a bunch of different ones like this. So you've got delegates and then you've got these target action things. So if you're looking to do something specific, like respond to the enter key, that's gonna be a delegate method. But if you want to do stuff with the text as the user is typing, if you need to validate, if you need to remove stuff, we recently did this in super easy timer. So in um, it's not working in this version, but new lines cause this to, to not work. So we've got this text input. And so we added a, a thing so that it would strip out new lines. So if you're pasting in text that had new lines, that would cause issues, but you can just type like five minutes or something like that. So if you're to paste in five minutes with a new line, it would error out. We just fix that by leveraging a, a callback using this target action thing. So that's super useful. All right, so I'll just quit that for now. So let's write, create a validate function. So let's say uh, func validate, and you don't have to keep watching if you don't want to. If this was helpful, click the like button. I'll show you how to validate the text. So we'll just create a validate function. So we'll create validate text, and that will be a string. It will return a bool. And then we just need to know if it's matching our secret text. Now we can write this, I think, as a one line. So we could say return uh, text is equal to secret. And we just add that in. So that will be our Boolean expression. So that's a single line. You could do an if statement here or an if else, and that would also be sufficient if you want a little bit more clarity that works. This keeps it a little bit less verbose, so we'll just go with that. All right, so if the validate text, and we pass it in our wrong button, so that's, I wanna do it in the text editing. So if validate text, and we pass in sender.text, we'll have to force unwrap it in order for this to work. Then we know that we can enable the button. So right now, the if you look, the button is disabled. So we'll say button dot is enabled is equal to true, so if it's valid. Otherwise, we'll set it back to not enabled so that if they mess it up or if they change it, uh, we will make it so it's disabled again. All right, so if we do that, that will work. And then let's do an action when the button is pressed. So right now I cannot press that button. So let's just make a change here and we'll just say button, or no, let's say the view, view dot background color is equal to, and we'll change it to green. And that's shorthand for UI color dot green. We'll go ahead and run, see what happens. And we should have uh, the text events working. So if we type secrets and it has to be with the uppercase S, just like I've written it in the code. So it's not valid yet. And then we add the exclamation mark, boom, valid. So we can enter the room and now it's all green. So that's how to work with the UI text field events. If you're interested in how this stuff has changed since Swift 2 or before, watch my next video that's going to cover that. Uh, I, I got a bunch of questions about this from some of my older videos that are like three years old. Apple's changed a lot of this code, and I want to do a new Swift course on Swift 4 and potentially Swift 5. 
And if you're interested in that, let me know down below. Click the like button, subscribe uh, somewhere on here. There should be a little button. I think it's down on this side. You can just click that to subscribe for updates. In my next video, I'm going to talk about how to, to update an old Swift 2 project that basically did the same thing as this. And I want to step through all of the steps that changed because the storyboard changed, the outlets changed, some of the functions changed, some of the properties changed. It was a bit of a nightmare to, to get it up and running. So I'm going to have that in the next video. And if you're excited about that, let me know down below and I will see you in the next video. All right, catch you later. All right, real quick, I, I totally forgot. I want to show you one more thing and that's how to do this all programmatically. And what we can do is if we have the outlet, we can say text field dot add, add target for action and for UI control event. So we'll go ahead, add this. The target's going to be self. The self is referring to the view controller. And we're doing that because we have the method down below called text field editing change. And that's the one that we're going to link up to. Then for the selector, if you press enter, uh, it's not really useful. Um, I don't know why it's defaulting to that, but it should default to the new syntax, which is selector. And I think both might still be valid, but it actually will tell you to update it if you do use the old syntax. Now, if I press escape, we cross our fingers. If we have code completion on, we should see all of the properties and attributes in our code file. And hopefully the ones that we've written are at the top and everything from Apple are down below. Uh, so that should be good. We're gonna look for this method signature. Now it's really important uh, to keep in mind that the, the signature is text field editing change. Now, if you have a single parameter, and I think if it's an unnamed, you don't actually need the parentheses, but I'm not entirely certain on that. Uh, so that's something that you'll have to check out. But if we do this, we can just go for that and it will work. And then I'll show you the alternate way of doing that as well. For the control events, if we type UI control events, we can then do dots, and then we're looking for the editing uh, changed. And you'll do the same type of actions. I'm going to put these on a separate lines just for some clarity here. So we can see the three things that are important for this. So self is the object that's going to respond. In this case, we're the object that's going to respond. But you could put this in another object and have it handle this. That's going to be the method that it's going to call. And so this matches our signature, and the event is the editing change. So that's how to add it programmatically. And you would just need to, to remove uh, the call and the UI to do the same step, and it would do the same. Now you can do this so that you don't need this. So it would work like that as well. And I'm just gonna leave it in like this. So that's what the autocomplete will insert. That's how to add it programmatically. <clears throat> and in the next video, I'm gonna go into how to update an old project that maybe was Swift 2, or if you're copying code from Stack Overflow. All right, so if you like this video, click the like button, and I will see you in the next video where I talk about updating old code so that you can overcome some of these beginner challenges because Swift has changed significantly over the past three years. Catch you later.